Hello there, Malcolm here with my 122nd booktube video and today I'll be bringing you my wrap-up video for March and my TBR for April. This is my first video since my last monthly video. Ordinarily I would do one in between covering my book of the month but I only managed six books so I thought I'd include it in this. But still a lot of books to get through so let's get cracking. First up I finished reading Legion of Thunder by Stan Nichol. This is book two of the Orc's First Blood trilogy where we follow the Orc warband leader Strike and his team of Wolverines as they go from one disaster to the next having unintentionally stolen something of value to the reigning lunatic. In this one they continue their quest to try and collect more of these things. They have no idea what they do but they figure having them is better than not. And so they traverse the landscape, fighting, killing, and doing a pretty good job of surviving, actually, while some things happen. A pretty strong fantasy story, really. The action scenes are really exciting. We both really enjoyed it, and I've already started book three by it. And after that, I then read Aliens vs Predator War. This is the third book in the graphic novel series following the exploits of Michiko Noguchi as she goes on a hunt with the Predator race. And she finds herself at an insulation on a planet with humans on it, and she has to pick a side. The artwork's on par with book one. It's nothing special, but it's very clear what's going on. And the story itself is okay. It's a bit annoying because it's also the follow-up of another series set in the Aliens world, which I've not read, and it follows characters from that adventure who come into this one and meet up with Noguchi. And so it's a bit of a crossover event, but I'm not aware of the other half of the crossover. I did a bit of research and the book that it comes from, I can't actually remember the name of it, had a very limited print run and doesn't really exist over in England, which explains why I don't know who these people are. I have read the novelization by Steve Perry. Oh no, no it was all right. It's worth reading. Nothing particularly special though. And after that, I then read a Darkness at Sethanon, this is book three of the Rift War Saga by Raymond E. Feist. I was supposed to finish this back in February, but I ran out of month. So I was determined to finish this before I got onto the reading for the month of March. Obviously for spoiler reasons, I can't go into too much detail about this one, but the big bad that was uh, rearing its ugly head has decided to show itself. And there's a big old Lord of the Rings, Helm's D, Minas Tirith type of battle that takes place in this, which is really good. The big climax at the end though, is a little bit light beam, CGI extravaganza. But for the most part, I really did enjoy this book. And I, just, and despite its size, I did swim through it quite happily by it. And actually a really good trilogy, to be honest. Interested to see where it goes from here. And after that, I then read Aliens vs Predator Eternal. And this one, a reporter, while doing some reporting, there's an attack, people die, and predatory type creatures phase into existence, which turn out to be men wearing predator equipment. She's able to track these people to their source, a extremely wealthy man by the name of Gideon Lee, who harvests predators for their organs to remain young. So you've got a bit of investigation in here. Xenomorphs do kind of turn up a bit, but not hugely. I quite enjoy the story. The artwork's perhaps a little washed out. I'm not sure if they're going through a slight film noir aspect of it. It's all right. It could have been jazzed up a little bit, perhaps. But on the whole, quite a solid story by it. And finally, I get to the books I intended to read in the month of March, starting with my book of the month, Dry, by Neil and Jared Schusterman. I really enjoyed Neil Schusterman's Ark of a Scythe trilogy and wanted to try something else by him. And so I tried this. When I picked this up, I expected it to be some sort of post-apocalyptic story where the water runs out. I'm only kind of half right. In a lot of these post-apocalyptic type stories where everything goes to pot, you know, you have zombies roaming the streets, we have other, some other virus thing happening. We only ever follow a main bunch of characters in a very localised area. We presume it's going on elsewhere around the planet, but we never find out for certain. In this one, it is a localised event. California pretty much runs out of water. It follows some children of a family who are just trying to survive. So it might as well be post-apocalyptic in its whole um, shutdown of systems and infrastructure and survival, with survival being very much the same sort of thing you get in all these survival stories with looking for tinned goods, fighting over goods and water. I mean, every single post-apocalyptic thing has a water issue anyway. But yeah, you, you do feel a bit thirsty re reading this one. So it does follow some of the usual plot points of a post-apocalyptic survival adventure story, but it was told quite nicely. It flowed really well. I don't think there was any real surprises in here. Um, there were a couple of scenes which suddenly were a bit, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. But on the whole, really good. Buy it. And then finally, I then read Predator Race War. Now, I'd read this one before and don't recall enjoying it very much. I thought it went on a bit too long and didn't really do much. I obviously paid more attention to it this time. I found this one much more gripping than I remember it. And although it does kind of take place in a prison with the predator in it, that's only a tiny part of the story. The main thrust being is a bunch of people who want to get hold of a predator and 
getting what the one in the prison is their plan. The one in the prison is just hunting criminals and mass murderers. Again, the artwork's nothing particularly special. You can clearly see who's who, but there's nothing particularly exciting. The story does meander a little bit. There's a couple of little side shoots that goes down and you just think, well, why? Why do we need that? Why do we need, need this character's entire backstory, for example? We don't. But I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would, and I'm glad I had bought it. So, yes, six books. Not terribly impressive. This is what I tend to try and read in April. So we have Diamond Mask by Julian May. This is book two of the Milieu series. This follows the story of Dorothy MacDonald, the Diamond Mask, who loses a lot of her family to the Fury and Hydra enemies of the Milieu and goes to the planet Caledonia to live with her father. And she tries to disguise the fact that she's got quite powerful in a lot of the metal faculties. Meanwhile, still in his villain's origin story, Mark Remillard is still developing his Cerebro Enhancement Machine in his quest to find the mental man. And Uncle Rogi, in the middle of it, just watches and tries to survive. Absolutely epic stuff. I love this series a lot. But the book was so big, it filled up most of March. So, got to try and read it in April. And filming this on the 10th of April, I have finished it now. But, yeah, this is my TBR for April. I was going to read this and did. And after finishing that, I then move on to my book of the month, which is Firefly Generations by Tim Lebon. This is book three of the Firefly series, but published fourth. And this one gives a little bit of backstory about River, about the, the Earth that was, and about how the people in the verse came to be there. In this one, Mal gets in his hands on a sort of treasure map, which only River can read, and they find themselves in a whole load of danger. So, quite a normal story for them then. Of the four Firefly books at the moment, this is the only one not written by James Lovegrove, and so I was curious to know how Tim Levin could stand up to his a good performance. And after I finish this, which I did last night, I shall then move on to Diggers by Terry Pratchett, book two of the Bromelia trilogy. Should have read this last month, I didn't, so I've got to read it this month. Hoping to whiz through this one. Bunch of gnomes, escape a store before it gets demolished, find themselves in a quarry, now need to move on to the next thing. It's a reread, I love this series, good stuff. Hopefully I get through this one really quickly. It's a quick easy read at 173 pages, which I should do. I'll then move on to Witches Abroad by Terry Pratchett. This is a Discworld novel where the witches go abroad and there's lots of uh, nice fairy tale quips and send ups in here. And at 286 pages, this should be another quick and easy read. So I'm hoping to finish this one by Wednesday. I've really got to pick up because I want to try and read everything I didn't read last month by halfway through this month so I can read this month's stuff. Anyway, that one's wrong. Anyway, that's that one. And after that, and then moving on to Quantum Leap Odyssey by Barbara E. Walton. Sam leaps into a super intelligent child and we'll find out what happens with that. And after that, I'll then move on to these X-Files mini books. Starting with EBE, Die Bug Die, Bad Sign, Our Town, Empathy and The Host. Weirdly they're taken from all sorts of seasons in no particular order and stuffed in this very specific order. And these are direct novelizations of the TV show episodes. My wife and I are binge watching these at the moment. We just finished Humbug last night. Hilarious episode. And I want to read all of these by the end of the month. And if I do, I'll endeavour to finally finish the Star Wars book, Tyrant's Test, book three of the Black Fleet Crisis by Sonny P. Cubic McDowell. A less than fantastic trilogy with some good bits in it though. I want to finish it, but I've got to read all that before I can. I can't be reading this, um, Alien vs. Predator Omnibus, starting with the graphic novel Alien vs. Predator, The Deadliest of the Species. One I remember taking ages to read last time and it, that didn't go anywhere, so I'm hoping it's going to be better this time. So far it's not really, but I want to read all this. And to other members of the family, I am reading To The Boys. I am reading The Colour of Magic by Terry Pratchett as the first Discworld book. They're really enjoying it. Uh, we have got the graphic novel, which they've read and are familiar with and I've already read them the Tiffany Aching series so they're not they're not new to this world individually uh, to the uh, my youngest I'm reading from the Edge Chronicles by Paul Stewart and Chris Riddle the Free Gladers so it's like epic happened at the end of the of the previous book Vox and uh, we've got the fallout from all that going on uh, I can't tell you because of spoilers he's really enjoying it and loves looking at the pictures to my oldest I'm reading Lion Adventure by Willard Price where Hal and Roger are signed up to hunt down some man-eating lions and to my wife, I'm currently reading Orcs First Blood Book 3, Warriors of the Tempest by Stan Nichols. And this continues the adventures of the Wolverines as they continue to collect these uh, these little trinkets. And of course, everything's coming, to he coming ahead as all these armies meet up and lots of fighting happening. We're probably going to do a joint video on the trilogy once we finish this one. And there we go. That's my wrap-up and TBR video done. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you have any comments or questions about any of the books I've just shown you, then please comment down below. But as usual, if you have nothing nice to say, then please keep it to yourself. Thank you, and until next time, see you later.